But the media headline that has captivated the week is the president's crackdown on the popular video sharing app known as TikTok. It's a decision that has been supported by many elected leaders, but one that is causing some controversy among its users. So to help us break down that perspective is Pavlina Asta, a radio personality and executive producer at Salem Media Group. So Pavlina, when we talk about this app known as TikTok, it's a relatively new app here in the United States, but it's garnered hundreds of millions of users in just a matter of a couple of months here in the United States. So for some of our viewers that may not know, what is unique about this app? Absolutely. Hi, Alex. Thank you for having me on your show. And so the, the unique thing about TikTok is it's fun, it's entertaining, you know, it's a great way for a lot of young people to express, you know, whatever it is that they want to express. TikTok is very versatile, you know, people have, it's comedy, it's in, in for, information, it's informative, it's fun. It's just like one of those great apps, it's minutes, you know, it's kind of like our new YouTube in a sense because we can just, you know, keep going through it and it's, it's very entertaining. It's been very helpful during, you know, quarantine times. And I think that's a big part of it, too, is that it really did start getting popular during quarantine times. And it does really mu much so tailor to the younger generation. I mean, it's 15 seconds to a minute long videos. It's very quick, something you can go through. Uh, and as you were saying, it covers a lot of different things. Usually when people think of TikTok, they think of dancing teens or something like that. But I've come across comedians. I've come across some people who do talk about politics, news, other things. But it seemed to too, all also get a very religious type of following, if you will, because they really make, are, put an emphasis on it being a community, I feel like. I feel like that's why there's a lot of support behind it right now. Would you say that's why so many younger people are really upset about this latest decision? Oh, absolutely. It's de TikTokers definitely, you know, form together. They're very collective in that sense. And originally the app was made for Generation Alpha, you know, the later Generation Alpha, and also younger Gen Zers, so that 10 to 15 age. But like you said, during the quarantine, during the whole this whole pandemic, it's become very popular among uh, millennials and, you know, even older generations. I see a lot of older people on there enjoying it and everything. So yeah, they, there's definitely like a community around it, for sure. And Pavlina, it's, apart from it just being entertainment as well, a lot of people also make a living on this. I mean, we've seen stories, for example, from people moving out in the middle of wherever, going to Los Angeles and getting a house with a bunch of other TikTok creators and really making a very lucrative career based off of what they're doing right now. So when we talk about the concept of a potential ban, what would that mean for a lot of people who do make a living or do run their businesses off of this app the same way that maybe some of our viewers may do off of Facebook? Right, and that's the thing. So they're on all social media platforms. Of course, there are certain people that kind of shine in that aspect, whether they're dancers and you know different things like that. Charlie is a really popular one. She's been doing, you know, featured in Super Bowl ads, and she's doing a bunch of different stuff now. And there's a lot of TikTokers out there that are doing that. And it's one of those things that I've seen a lot of small businesses. You know, they can sell their products on there, or they can promote their products, and it's a great way to just like get everything out there. And I think banning. TikTok would be drastic. However, I understand the national security aspect of it, but I think that would be that would be pretty drastic and would definitely affect and very much anger that whole TikTok community. And I think some of our nation's leaders kind of recognize that as well. They understand that it is a very popular app, and to some degree, it is a very popular asset that could be good for a U.S. company to have. You bring up the national security concerns, and really the underlying premise of that is that some of the information of users could be stored and then be shared to, the, of course, the Chinese communist government. So that's the concern right there. But a lot of people also asking, like, one route may be for a U.S. company such as Microsoft to buy TikTok. But then some are also asking, is there more of a fair market type of approach? Could we just make another app, for example, that is somewhat similar? I know that Instagram is supposed to come out with, I believe it's called Reels in the near future. Is this a type of technology you think that can be replicated by another company? Or do you think that TikTok really has a foothold in this sector? There have been over 315 million downloads of just TikTok. Like that was a record setting, you know, for that quarter. And it, there's such a, it's kind of like restarting Instagram at this point. You know, there's so many followers on there. Yes, it can be done. And yes, you know, their competitors, such as Instagram, is coming out with something, I think it's called Real, you're right, on where they're coming up with their own ways to, you know, get people off of TikTok, keep them on Instagram. So absolutely, there's totally ways of doing that. But there's already such a strong foothold with those followers in TikTok that it would be a little challenging. And you bring up the idea, for example, you use the uh, influencer Charlie. She's someone who has millions of followers on that app now. But I saw an interview with her recently where she was talking about how on Instagram she really didn't have that big of a following. So is it safe to say that 
if you experience success on TikTok, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have success on Reel, if you will, on Instagram or Facebook or something else like that. Is this kind of a unique type of position to be in? Definitely, because that the area that TikTok kind of holds is definitely for younger people. So, you know, Instagram, Facebook, they have different demographics. People, you know, anyone older than, say, if you're not in the TikTok community, you probably don't know who Charlie is, right? right. You probably don't know a lot of the, the famous TikTokers that are now coming out with makeup lines and all of these other amazing things. Um, but it's so it doesn't translate in a lot of senses because they already have such a following on that app. Maybe those, you know, the younger people who are following them don't have Instagram or whatever. They probably do. But like yeah. that's where they go to. They go to TikTok to watch their favorite people on there. So, no, it doesn't always translate. I think that's more of like a good demographic thing. And you bring up, too, that there's other business ventures that come from TikTok, whether it's makeup lines, some people start music careers, some people just promote their businesses. So I think you're exactly right to say that there are implications to this decision that go outside of the app itself. But Pavlina Asta, I really appreciate you coming on, breaking down for myself and our viewers what TikTok is and the direction that it's headed in. Thank you.